Beloved, today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Today we actually celebrate the third and final chapter in the great theodrama of God's plan of salvation. The first chapter of this theodrama we hear from the book of Genesis, whereby the Spirit of the living God hovered over the waters. And through this interaction and God the Father speaking, let there be life, life was brought into the world. The second chapter, we hear that the same Spirit that hovered over the waters at the beginning of creation now hovers over overshadows and eventually envelops Mary and this interaction caused Mary to bring Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior into the world the third and final chapter of this great theodrama of God is that the Holy Spirit promised by Jesus whose ascension we celebrated last week the gift of the Holy Spirit now comes upon the Apostles we hear that his presence is so powerful that it is manifested in tongues of fire appearing over each of the disciples' heads. Jesus has fulfilled his promise that when he goes to the Father, he will send the Comforter, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit upon all who believe in him. How do we as God's people believers in Jesus Christ how do we continue to be participants to be characters in this great theodrama of God who are all called invited loved and empowered by the Holy Spirit to keep building and advancing the kingdom of our loving Father there are three things we can glean as a people who are empowered by the Spirit to use our gifts and to depend on him to advance the glory of our God the first is this we all as human beings thirst for something sometimes it's a physical thirst and we want to quench it with a particular drink sometimes we thirst for an experience or we may even thirst for things material things that we think will give us a greater sense of an identity or a greater sense of comfort yes people places and things may satisfy particular thirsts only for a while but God who created each of us has reserved that special place that only he himself can fully satisfy and Jesus has promised that those who believe in him and trust in him to all believers Jesus will give living water from which none of his believers will ever thirst again this is the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we who thirst for God we who thirst for spiritual things we will all be satisfied because of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in our lives but we must all answer a question Jesus has promised that he will satisfy our thirst with living water the gift of the Spirit but do we want it I often use the image of people having a bottle of vitamins on the dining table but somehow in the busyness of our lives and all the things that pull on our time and energy the bottle of vitamins remains on the table but somehow we just don't find the time to open it take one for our body's benefits it's the same with the Holy Spirit we all have various thirsts but do we want it and choose it do we choose to say Holy Spirit I want you to satisfy the thirst in my life Holy Spirit I recognize that there's a void and a space in my life that only you can fill and so I surrender to your complete control and complete love in my life as much as God loves us and scripture tells us God is love love cannot be forced every relationship is one of choice the Holy Spirit is indeed present in all our lives because we believe in the power of Christ and his resurrection but only when we choose to say Holy Spirit come come and take control come and lead me guide me strengthen me help me only then can the Holy Spirit truly empower us as the Spirit desires 
For we can easily turn our backs to the Holy Spirit the same way so many of God's people tend to turn their backs on each other for various reasons or moments in life. God the Father, who loves us, will always be present with us. Indeed, Jesus has promised that He will be with us always. And that is why He sent the gift of the Spirit. But only if we choose to say, Holy Spirit, come, come and take charge of my life. Come and bless me and use me and fill me so that I may add to the theodrama of God's plan of salvation in using the gifts of my time, my talent, my treasure to advance the glory of my Father's name. Do we ask deliberately, intentionally, the Holy Spirit to come and take charge? It's a choice. Do we say, Holy Spirit, I recognize your presence. I want you to satisfy my thirst. Come and make me your dwelling place so that I may be filled with your presence and you may invite me, use me, empower me to advance the plan of God's salvation. Having then recognized that it's a choice and we have to want it, and claim it and invite the Holy Spirit to come and take charge. The second gleaning of truth as believers in Christ is this. That as the Spirit is invited to take charge of our lives, we must learn how to walk daily in the Spirit. How do we do this? As infants, we were fed liquefied food. As we begin to develop, we are now invited and trained to move away from liquid food to more solid food so that over time we make adjustments and the body becomes more in tune to what is needed and what is necessary. When it comes to walking in the power of the Spirit, it's a step-by-step -step process. We can only learn how to walk in the power of the Spirit when we have a real connection with Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is when we are connected with Jesus then we will pay attention to His words. And Jesus reminds us that my words are spirit and they are life. Therefore the guide for our lives must be the word that Jesus speaks to all of us who believe in Him. When the Spirit fills us it is then that the Spirit will help us to know when we are walking in the right track that leads us into the arms of our Jesus or whether we have gone astray and walk away from Jesus, His kingdom, and indeed walk away from each other. We have to learn how to discern whether the steps that we are taking in life are leading us into the kingdom or leading us away from the kingdom. And the measure for that journey must be the Word of God because the Word tells us what the values of the kingdom are. The Word tells us what is expected of a people who believe in Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection and this Word says what is of light and what is of the darkness. Too many of God's people allow various spirits to control their lives and not even recognize it. Too many of God's family who come to church on a weekly basis are so controlled by the spirit of anger, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of envy, the spirit of selfishness, the spirit of gossip, and they don't even recognize that these are the spirits that they have given themselves under their care. The people of God don't recognize that these spirits have been handed the power to control their lives because we see these vice, these strains, these moments of darkness continuously reflected in their lives on a habitual basis. And the more God's people give in habitually to these negative spirits, these dark spirits, the harder it is to step away from them. But the spirit that we have received, beloved, is a spirit of light, of truth, and of love. And if we choose to claim that spirit and give the Holy Spirit full and complete control of our lives, the spirit will bring us back 
away out of the realm of those spirits of darkness and lead us into God's wonderful light. It's a choice that we make, but it's also a call by the Holy Spirit to discern what are the steps am I taking according to the Word of God that will either lead me into eternal life or into the eternal tomb. The third and final point is that when we recognize that we are a people empowered and blessed by God, it is then we will understand what it means to truly live as a people who are empowered to build God's kingdom in the great theodrama of God's plan of salvation. The disciples were locked in the room. They were sad. They were fearful. They were angry. They were disturbed. They were depressed. But we hear that when the Holy Spirit came upon them and they allowed the Spirit to take control of their lives, they were able to step out and become participants in building the kingdom of our God. Beloved, people who come to church to be filled on a Sunday or on a weekend do nothing during the week and come back to be refilled the following weekend, you're missing the boat. We are filled and empowered to go out and be Christ for others. We are sent by Jesus to go and be good news for others. We are so blessed by the Holy Spirit that despite our failures, our weakness, our sin, our doubts, our denial, the Holy Spirit says, when I am allowed to be who I am for you, the spirit of life and joy, when you are sent, you are not sent in your name, but you are sent in the name of the God who loves us. And through the Spirit, we are then, like Mary, invited to allow to give the Spirit room in our lives so that we can become the face of Christ Jesus for others. That is what it means to be a people who operate under the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit. That we who are blessed must now turn around and be a source of blessing and good news for others by being the face and presence of Jesus Christ for all those who are now thirsting for something more. When we learn how to do this, that is when our faith will begin to make sense. That is when Christianity and going to church will have greater impact on our world because we do not operate on either our own strengths or our own weaknesses, but we operate in the power of the Spirit through the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In this country, we are a Jesus people, and we thank God for that. But do not be afraid to each morning, each day of our lives, Pay attention to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, come, come and bless me today. Come and guide me today. Come and use me today so that I will bear fruits for your eternal kingdom, fruits that will last, fruits that will give witness to your power and glory, fruits that will invite others to become participants in building the kingdom of God in his theodrama. May we continue to yield to the power of the Spirit. May we continue to show ourselves as believers in Jesus by doing all that we can to allow the Spirit of Christ to take our hearts, take our lives, and lead us forever into the joys of His kingdom. To our God of life, love, and joy, be glory and praise forever and ever.